For this podcast, the guest is a 19-year-old kid who is working in a blockchain startup. He is already earning multiple lakhs. He didn't go to college. He is a self-taught programmer. He learned by himself machine learning and blockchain. And he actually had some great tips for everyone, any software developer who is right now either working in a company or uh, studying in any of the new universities. Uh, so I hope you like this podcast. Do watch it completely. Hi, Pratham. Thank you so much for joining on my channel for taking out time uh i found your profile on twitter and really liked your story like it, there was one thread where you had mentioned about how you just completed your high school and now you are doing a full time job and it has been 7 months so i was like it is very amazing to know such a, such kind of stories and even share it with people so i thought why not contact you so maybe if you would like to start like how your coding journey began and what what steps did you follow to actually do whatever you are doing today yeah so i think i've like talked about this in multiple places how like i started programming in 5th grade like i think that was like the first time i like just got an introduction to programming and my i was in this uh, there was a python workshop i attended and i learned the basics of python and like simple things like how to print statements how to do conditional like if else those sort of statements i learned mm. functions i learned classes uh, most of it didn't make sense to me at the time but it just got me intrigued into you know like oh there is this like i, I mean i'd always been interested in computers like i would spend all my days like playing games like need for speed and all that when i was young mm. so uh, i was always like curious like you know what's going on behind inside of the computer like you know when you move a mm. cursor like what's what's going on like why mm-hmm. is this thing moving why does this work the way that it does so i was uh, always interested in that so in fifth grade like that was another like push towards that that uh, like going for that python workshop so after that i didn't do anything for a lot of years because i was even though i want i was interested in learning how to code like there were no resources and this was around 2015 2014 maybe and you right. know in india we didn't have geo until then and internet was like you know very hard That's to come true. by still right right so until like 2017 2018 we didn't have internet so i just couldn't do anything you know even if i my parents are not from an engineering background so they couldn't help me either so i was just trying to learn things on my own explore and what not but in 2017 2018 when you know i got the internet i started like uh, doing some courses online where i was learning even more programming languages like there's this uh, website called progate where i learned like java like not not really learned but i understood the syntax of java php ruby uh, go all the, all these languages but i mean i wasn't building anything i was just like okay how do you do an if else statement in all these languages i knew that but that's kind of useless right so again that was another mistake i made because no one was there to guide me again so i just did that um and in this time i, I was also participating in a lot of computer science related events in my school so i was doing some 3d printing stuff i was doing uh, things with python here and there i was also like the part of the technology council of my school i led that for uh, for two years and Uh, so i was like trying things you know i also built this cool website using wordpress uh, it was like a blogging platform where everyone could where we could like share the liter- uh, like like the, what people are doing in the school and it was uh, that sort of thing so i took initiatives in that sense but never really had the guidance all that so just struggled on my own and i think in 2020 when the pandemic started i had a lot of free time with me so i started learning a uh, tensor flow and neural networks and i was that was really interesting to me and this was at the time where i didn't have a very good pc or a lap like a setup like that i have right now i i had this like old laptop that was always overheating and all that so it was a struggle in that sense also so i was uh, doing machine learning work on that laptop was very hard so i like i tried like then i just i was exploring things there i Uh, got to know about Kaggle, Google Colab, all that. So I tried that. But basically, I was just exploring things I found interesting. And in 2020, mm-hmm. I also started my Twitter. Like that just happened by accident. I mean, I never started my Twitter as a you know that hey I will grow these many followers and 
like i will do sponsored posts and i'll make money like i never had that in mind i i just like mm. uh, i just shared things i was doing or found it interesting and um uh, a lot of people started following me and i think that was um maybe that what did you post was, about like, back then in 2020 i i was posting about things i was learning so i was learning tailwind and react at the time so i i made like a simple uh, i think app that could like scrape uh the web for certain keywords something along those lines so i built that with react tailwind and javascript so i that this is one example so i shared that and how i guess i built it um or maybe i built like a small website or or a neural network and uh, i would just explain you know in these nine lines of code i built this neural network with python and here is how every step worked like you know first you import mm-hmm. tensor flow then you make the model you fit the model onto the data and in this model you have activation functions all that so I, i would explain that and i think a lot of people found that interesting and i also i did lots of other things i also shared like some math stuff i was interested in so uh, it was basically things i was doing and working on and i tried to present that in an interesting way and and this, this was great. at the time when you were like right still in high school bro. right 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 yeah i just finished high school this year in okay <laughs> february march yeah okay great so how did you find so much time along with so most of the people yeah. what they follow the path is like do the preparation for je and all those things yeah that's another thing like i was very like privileged in the sense that we had this pandemic going on as i mentioned like i didn't have to go to school so there was like two or three hours that were saved in that commute and then i also after going to school you get tired you sleep and then you know lots of time wasted there also so like all that time i would not have had if school was there obviously you know i was in like t- like my t- 10th and 12th grade were during these times so it was like a very special time for me and i and like now obviously you know schools and everything have started so it's not like uh, like if if this would have happened now i definitely wouldn't have under time so yeah, yeah. okay Right. So, uh, during this time, you started learning blockchain also. Like right now, you're working at a blockchain startup, uh, which is very cool. So, how did you start with your blockchain journey? So, I was interested in so for like I've been interested in finance since 2018. Like I read uh, company reports, like stock investing, and I do that on the side, obviously. So that's like. that's like one in, like interest of mine and then technology is obviously another interest and uh, i was um, like i think i had this discussion with my dad about like cryptocurrencies and blockchains and back in 2017 when there was the ico rush and that's that was like the first time i got to know about crypto and all that but i didn't really go into blockchain development as such so that like um, i didn't really know much about it but in 2021 I happened to know the founder of this company called Third Web, and uh, they wanted some help. Um, and you know, may, I was just there was an opportunity for me to maybe come in as a developer relations person. So I built that was actually like my first job. So I, I like I built documentation. I worked in com worked with the community. I uh, helped improve the product. Like um, gave suggestions, feedback there. So I did that stuff. um that was like my first sort of entry into the blockchain world and um, since then i just went deeper down the rabbit hole like i i, I think I'm, by this time school had also opened so it was a bit difficult so i like i was just learning about how blockchains work how to scale blockchains how to write code that can run on top of blockchains or i was just exploring things like that i did a couple of projects here and there also um and finally in 2022 august i applied for this program called uh, celestia's modular fellows so celestia okay. is this company it's another blockchain company and um, they are sort of like the pioneers of this modular blockchain world that there is so that's where i got exposure to this modular blockchain world and um just another uh, place for me to explore and meet people in this industry so that's where actually i happened to meet neil somani who is the founder and ceo of eclipse and mm-hmm. this was in december like and at the time i was still busy with like still had my 12th grade to go so i was like you know let's wait for a couple of months and until uh, and as soon as i'm free i'll join eclipse 
and mm. that's how it happened i joined eclipse uh, in march so yeah right. i had gotten like i was i had gotten a couple of other offers also but um i just chose to go with eclipse because i really liked the mission and like uh, i was really interested in their technology that was like the main driving force towards me joining eclipse so how did you find all these companies who were doing good in blockchain and also how did you apply to them so i never applied to any company i have i don't okay. even have a resume like all the opportunities that have come to me like all the opportunities that i have have mostly been companies that are, that approach me or come to me so uh in like i had gotten offers in 2021 also when i was in high school itself so the uh, for the third web thing what i was talking about is uh, i just i was active on twitter obviously and then uh the founder knew me through twitter like we were friends so that's how i was able to work at third web and for celestia's modular fellows cohort i was i was scrolling through twitter and i saw it so i applied and i got selected somehow so um that mm-hmm. that was how i got celestia's thing and eclipse obviously i uh, eclipse reached out to me when i was working in the modular like in, in mm-hmm. celestia's module like their modular fellows cohort so there they like basically it was a three month program where i was uh, learning about like the modular blockchain space i was looking into research papers all that and i was also like building a project with celestia and i was posting about it on twitter so i think all that visibility helped uh, eclipse mm. reach out to me and that's how uh, i got to eclipse so those are like uh, all the uh, like that that's mostly how all the opportunities came to me got it so mostly twitter like you have been posting out things and people started reaching out to you right? yeah uh, twitter yeah I, i would say some have come through linkedin also but mostly twitter yeah got it so what are your plans now what new are you learning and uh, what about college <laughs> <laughs> so i am obviously working at eclipse and we're doing some pretty uh, in, in pretty interesting research in something called the execution layer of blockchains um i won't go into much technical details of that but like we're doing we're doing things there uh, and obviously i'm i still work with celestia on multiple fronts so uh there is uh, i'll be like talking about celestia's technology and things like that so um that'll be coming soon so stay tuned for that and then okay. i obviously uh I, I i i'm also doing some machine learning research with this college called neeti um so mm. like i'm uh, i'm like a research assistant there so on the weekends i write some of the code things like that and i'm uh, also just uh, working on some side projects of mine trying to learn rust web assembly all that and and i'm also teaching myself computer science in my free time so i'm learning on the math myself all the all the other stuff so data structures um, algorithms All yeah 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 all that stuff yeah and uh, distributed systems parallel computing so um what well, concurrent like, programming yeah. yeah all that stuff so and i am not uh, as far as college goes what like my uh, i'm not sure myself but i think the basic idea is that you know i obviously have an incredible job at eclipse and i'm having like lots of fun doing research and everything so i don't think it makes sense that i leave this All, all that's going on and then go to college and everything restarts you know so mm-hmm. i will definitely be continuing this for uh, like it looks like for the next foreseeable couple of years and then uh once maybe you know i want to actually go into academia or i want to like at, like if i feel like i want to do that then i think i might go back to college but seems unlikely as of now because uh, <laughs> right. i think most of my academic exposure is anyway like done through like doing research or like giving all these talks so uh, maybe we don't need college so uh, right yeah. <laughs> right yeah for for most of the people even for me if i would say like most of the things that which i learned about computer science and all the other things are mostly the things i learned on the side projects and not actually in the college so so it's fine actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, if you have to recommend someone who wants to start with blockchain what sh- what should be their first steps or a plan so i think if you want to work in the web3 and blockchain space uh, like there's lots of opportunities not just in 
programming but also marketing business development and all that and i think a lot of companies re- are really looking for this sort of talent so uh you just have to know your own strengths and you know first you have to decide like what part of this ecosystem that you want to work on and personally my strengths were that i obviously i was a, i'm a somewhat decent programmer and i also have this large following so uh i not only do software engineering work at eclipse i also help with our marketing strategies i help with our business development stuff because i know a lot of people in the industry so you know i help make some of the deals happen so um that so like uh, it, it just depends on like what your strengths are and where you want to sort of work in specifically and that's for you to decide but uh, like i think um i can let like i think we can specifically talk about like programming so right if you want to come into web3 as a like a blockchain developer i think there are two paths that you can take May, maybe you want to work on the core blockchain code like how to make better blockchains and that's typically done in go rust or c++ so that that that's mostly the tech stack that's there and, or if you want to work on more of the application side of blockchains like building on top of blockchains then i think it makes sense to learn something like javascript or python along with uh, solidity and then solidity. in javascript you have to learn like javascript frameworks like ether js brownie or whatever and uh, it also helps to learn, know some front end so like next js or react so having those basic programming skills i think will you just like you just have to decide which path you want to take and then you know there are so many blockchain so many blockchain companies that differs from place to place but this is generally how it works and yeah and for context like i work on both the play parts at eclipse like i handle some of the devops stuff i handle some of the infrastructure i handle a lot of the front end stuff also so it's like that's sort of my role but like yeah that's like a general way to think about getting a job in the blockchain or web3 space i would say got it so how did you st- like pick the side projects which you did so when you had to start coding for example you want to learn on the like you mentioned on the infrastructure side so what projects did you pick up to learn so i just i just do things that i like honestly like i don't really have any if i want to if i'm interested in something i'll just keep building on it and like that that's sort of how i learn but like for example like uh, recently i've been trying to learn rust so i so if you know about this technology called electron it's a way to mm-hmm. make desktop and cross platform applications using basically the chromium v8 engine it's like a stripped mm-hmm. down version of chrome and you can make apps using that and there's a rust alternative to it called tauri and mm-hmm. it has performance benefits and all that so since i was interested in it i've recently started to learn rust and use tauri and um like i'm, I'm building like a project there with a couple of my friends it's like a file sharing application so it uses web sockets uh, and react on the front end so um that that's one example of a project that i just started learning because i'm interested in it and uh, i was also doing like this small basic cyber security sort of talk at my school so i for that i just built a small some there's something called an xss exploit mm, so i just implemented right. that using javascript and html so that was like a basic mm. thing i did um so most of my motivation for doing projects are just things i'm interested in you know even the research i'm doing in uh, with the college that's uh like i was just interested in something called graph neural networks and how right. we can use it to optimize links in the supply chain so mm-hmm. i don't fully understand it yet but i'm just figuring it out and i'm interested in it so uh, that's kind of how i chose my side projects and uh, honestly i think i wish i did a better job with just like organizing like my side projects uh, because it was just like um at the start i didn't know like i mean you have to have some sort of direction otherwise you'll one day you'll do some javascript thing one day and you leave it halfway and you'll right. jump to something else so i think you know uh, i definitely lacked that discipline uh, and more recently you know i've been trying to fix it and actually like when i sit on a project i fully sit through it and complete it so yeah oh, so that, and, that's and it. You post it publicly on github uh yeah i think some of it is on github some of it is private right now and uh, obviously the work i'm doing at eclipse that's obviously private and 
um that will be open source in in some time but that's up to the company so yeah right on cl yeah. like if you're looking for inspiration mm-hmm. like my github is in the best place to go to because um just it's just in a mess like i've been using it for like 5 years and i uh, there are lots of just small projects that i just left midway and like some projects that i just did so maybe in a month or so when i clean it up and I actually put like uh, like then maybe you know you can look at it and get like good inspiration but i would say if you like uh, look at other people's github for now if you want inspiration so, <laughs> yeah just a disclaimer that <laughs> yeah okay yeah mostly this happens when you it used to happen to me also like start a side project and then do it for some time one two weeks mm-hmm. then you get bored and then you start pick, pick pick something else and it's really hard to actually do focus on one thing um, mm-hmm. do it yeah so how yeah. did you strike a balance and learn these things while doing all these side projects what would you say the best strategy which worked like doing side projects helped you learn the best possible way or would you say reading books or something like that helped more so i think uh, like i how i speak to but i think there's definitely a balance to be made like when you are like learning the theory and then watching tutorials and actually building things because uh, you can't just build things without knowing anything right like you don't even know what rust is or how you in the basic syntax is how will you even try and you know build a project with tauri or whatever so be, i think what helps to do is like maybe if you're interested in something i would say skim through like a like crash course of it and that way you'll have the basic basic parts that you know okay these are like the th- this is how functions work in rust this is how inheritance works in rust or this is how ownership works in rust or whatever you know uh, you'll have a basic idea of that and then you, you can just like try reading through the documentation or dive into like a project like a very small like a small project like a to do list or something like that and then obviously you will make lots of mistakes you will not know how to use the syntax and that's where i think now i find it helpful to use chat gpt or something to just ask hey how do i write an if else statement in rust how do i write a struct in rust what's a trait in rust or something like that so when you ask those questions to chat gpt like you like you so first like the idea behind this is that in the video that you see you'll get a first like basic overview of everything and once you start building the project you'll start filling in the blanks as per your needs so i think that's like a very effective way to learn and do side projects that i've learned recently i mean before chat gpt you know it was obviously a lot more difficult like you would i wouldn't say it was a lot more difficult but like you couldn't like ask questions to someone right, right? so it was like you had to more like go on stack overflow and check but uh, i think now that with chat gpt i think this is the way that i am learning new things and it's been working out like much better than just you know doing tutorials and not actually working on projects so it's like yeah i think the practical part is also pretty important yeah it's much faster uh, to actually ask questions to chat gpt and just do whatever you're doing uh, i even also started uh, i was building a project and it was like in one day i could build the complete thing it was not a big project but chat gpt helped a lot in that Right, right. So, obviously, I, like you have to be careful using Chat GPT also because you don't want Chat GPT to, to just write the entire code for you. Like, oh, nice! I'll just copy paste this, but that way you won't learn. So you have to right. be careful and uh, like ask Chat GPT to like give you hints on doing certain things, but don't ask it to like write this entire code for me. Like ask it small questions, like you know, like how I explained, like how to write a function or how to. like think of the logic yourself and then the syntax chat gpt can help you with that's personally recently what i've started doing got it yeah. so i see a lot of books in your background which one is the most helpful book you have read on programming or yeah on general? programming okay so in i think in programming um there are some machine learning books that i really like so there is this a book called deep learning with python and pytorch it's by it, it's with the fast api framework and i just think that it's very well explained and it helped me learn pytorch to a degree and i, I just really enjoyed it and obviously the fast sorry the fast ai framework is just very nice to work with so uh, that's why like that's one of my most favorite programming language uh, programming books there's like a newer model that's new newer edition that's coming soon so um i think you can check that out other than that i 
I won't really say I have some other Python or uh, like Python and JavaScript books, but I found it better to just learn through online documentation or resources because they're more up to date and books. Uh, I just didn't prefer for that sort of learning. So, yeah. It was really great to know about your journey, whatever things you have done. Really helpful for anyone who is trying to learn blockchain or maybe any new technology. Good set of steps you offered and also i I really like the way you uh, mentioned how you promote the things which you have been working on on the way social media platforms i think that really helps to come across new opportunities yeah absolutely thank you so much sukhant for having me here and uh, you know i will tell everyone that my journey was unique and you know i uh, i was lucky in some sense that i got up like i like by chance i happened to be on twitter and you know i was in the right place at the right time that's why i ca- i got these opportunities but i think everyone has their own journey and um so i like i just uh, i just hope that no one gets demotivated by seeing like what i am doing you know so don't compare me to you like compare you to like yourself from yourself. like uh, yeah so i think that, like i think a lot of people also tell me that you know they they feel bad about when they see my progress and then they see their progress but like i also went through my own struggles i had my own set of other difficulties it's just that in in terms of career and stuff like that i just had these opportunities at the right time so just wanted to put that out there thank you so much for taking out time this has been really great